success of the Basics of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu instructional series, along with a free bonus tape, How to Handle Stand-Up Aggression, inspired hundreds of students to write me requesting this series on street self-defense. In these tapes, I'll show you how to handle real-life threatening attacks using our proven jiu-jitsu techniques and prepare you for the violent streets of the 90s. In this tape, you learn how to defend yourself from the punch, the tackle, a variety of headlocks, and guns. Another very common aggression from a person at this distance is when the bad guy swings a punch at you. That's what you want to do. You want to initially block with the arm this way. You want to block. Both hands should come up, even if he just swings the punch with one hand. Because if he fails the punch with one hand, he's going to want to swing the second hand. And by bringing both hands up, you're automatically blocking both sides. Regardless of which hand he punches, I come up with both hands. The idea is to bring your hand right here at this point, slightly around your wrist, so that you don't have to force his arms down. Instead, the angle of the arm is what makes it difficult for him to get to my face. But I'm not forcing the arm, I'm just angling my arm slightly this way, so that it fits right here. That's what I'm looking for. That's the move I want to use, right here. One. From this position, I want to wrap his arm over and control right under the bicep and hold the elbow. Step to his side and hold him by the waist. Step in front of him. Again, I'm very relaxed at this position so my hip can come across very easily. From here, I'll put the head down, throw him, and either complete with that arm lock here or use a strike or an elbow hit, whatever you want. One, once again, that's the move. From here, I'm gonna wrap the arm, step to the side and hold his waist. Step in front, bring my hip across. Once I wrap this, I could go over the arm or under the arm. One, and then hip comes across and hip falls over. You see this on this side, please. One. Again, you could go over the arm or under the arm. Step in front of him, bring your hip across, and as you put your head down, it goes over, but you cannot complete with a strike. <laughs> One, right. two, three, and then head right. Bing. Be sure that when you wrap the arm, Take your time at this position. If the person wants to move around, you just ride with him. Let him move around here. Even if he tries to hit me on the back of the head with that hand, it's not a fatal hit anymore. By then I have the space to come in here and complete the action this way. So you should learn to be comfortable with this move. And just hang in here for a little bit, it's okay. Step in front, bring the hip, head down. Bang with the strike. Another common attack is if the person wants to tackle you by ramming you like this and trying to come with a headbutt or something like this towards your upper body. So the movement is to take a step back and brace him by the shoulders. From here, the back knee will come straight into the guy's face. That's the idea. So I'm gonna block and then bring the knee up once again. I'm gonna brace him here with this and then bring the knee up. One and then bring the knee up. Again, when I step back, I don't want to step back in this position and lose my balance. I want to make sure that I brace myself to do this move and then the knee hit comes straight up. Locking my elbows straight and my leg and my back leg in base like this so that the back knee comes straight up. Wow. 
rock, hit with the knee, and then help his head down, flip the guy over. We come with a strike, or an arm lock, whatever you want from this position. So block here, come with the knee strike, then I'm gonna move out of the way in base and push his head down here, forcing my, his arm head down and pushing the arm up, getting going in the same motion. From the side, I can either wrap the arm up or strike or kick him on the head, anything on that side. So I step back, knee hit, come around in base. My hand will help his head down and the other hand goes inside of the arm to help him lead him down this way. In base at all times. A strike, an arm bar, or a kick on the head. I want to block, come with the hit, come around, come here, another complete with the arm lock, or a strike. Kick on the back of the head. Let me do one last one, please. If the person comes from this side again here, one, two, three. Use the move. Now I use a strike, or arm bar, or kick on the back of the head. Let us now review a variety of different headlock scapes. Let's suppose the person that grabs you by the neck like this with one hand, and he's now trying to punch with that second hand. The first thing I want to do here is block that arm. I'm going to use both of my hands to make sure that I secure that arm enough, and he does not have access to my face anymore. Once again, right? So as soon as he grabs my neck, I'm already here blocking that arm so that he can't hit me anymore. I want to hold his arm back with that hand over the bicep. This second hand, I'm going to hold his wrist and glue it against my chest. The leg on the same side, I will step back, keeping his hand against my chest. And as I bend forward, I have his arm now under control in this position. So he grabs the neck. I will trap that arm. Hold the wrist, glue it against my chest. Get my body against him. The leg steps back. One, head down, and then lift the arm up. Grabs the neck. Once I hold this, if you want, when you step back, brace yourself against him so that it makes it easier for you to keep him away. So that my body now is holding my, my head away from him. From this position, I will bend forward, always keeping the hand glued to my chest, and then crank the arm up that way. <laughs> One, two, three. Keeping the head on the chest is the trick. Keep your head back so he cannot pull you down here. Brace yourself away from him and never let go of the back hand. Head on the chest, from here, head down, and then lift the arm up. Let's do one time on the side. Immediately trap the arm. Be sure that you hold his hand way far back because if you let the hand stay here and hold like this, he can still be hitting you. So your first concern is to keep the hand absolutely safe away from punching you. Once you have this hand controlling the bicep, it's now time to hold this wrist, glue it to your chest, and be sure that when you step back with this leg, readjust the base so that you don't find yourself off balance and losing your base here. Take a big step and turn your feet so that you are comfortable in base. My hip is holding him away from me, hand on my chest, and I now bend forward to bring the arm up. One last time, please. I want to control the arm. Chest. One, two. Okay. If the person grabs my neck on the headlock this way, I want to take a step forward and put both of my hands on his knee. Once again, one, some of my cabeza of French. As he does this move, that's my first initial step. One, that's my move. I'm in base, and with both of my hands like this, bracing his knee. 
from this position, I'm gonna sit back, flipping the first one over. The idea is to do this move. From this position, I wanna let my body weight fall back and keeping the hands on his knees to prevent his knee from hitting my face. So as I sit back, I keep my hand on his knee so that he doesn't have easy access to hit me with the knee here. So I block this and his face is gonna land on the ground. Base, I'm gonna push off the front leg so that I can then drive back. Bing, that's the move. His head ends on the ground like this. So when I sit back, his head's end right here. Okay. Hoist will roll so that he doesn't get hurt every time we do it. One. Once again, your movement is a step forward in base, bracing his knee, and then sit back. A step forward in base, bracing the knee, push off the front leg, and fall back. When you step forward, as the person is grabbing your neck, be sure to tuck your neck in to increase the resistance of your neck muscles at this point. So that's what you want, tuck your neck in and brace the knee. From here, let yourself fall back and let him fly over. Okay. All right. Um, then we have a couple of other headlocks here. If the person grabs your neck and now holds you down, he's not trying to punch this time where I would have done this move. He's now grabbed my neck and he's pulling me down here. I want to hold him by the waist or over the arm with the back hand. This hand, I'm going to brace the knee so he doesn't hit me with a knee shot. I'm blocking that knee. This leg, I'll step inside. And then I'll sit right here. So the movement is one, two, and three. From this position, I'm going to establish my base because he might want to be shaking me out of this position. I'll make a frame with the arm and then lean the weight into his neck. Once again, when the person holds my neck and pulls my head down, I want to block that knee so he doesn't hit me with that knee. There's not much he can do with this leg anyways. Go ahead, boys. This leg is kind of limited on its ability to hit me anyways. So I'll block that knee, hold the hand around the waist. We'll take a step forward with this leg and then sit back so that I can end up on top of him. I'm going to spread my hands and establish my base here. My main concern at this point is not to rush to the neck but keep myself in a good enough base because a stronger person on the bottom could be throwing me off balance. If I don't think about my base, I could lose the position. So my goal is to be comfortable, rest my weight on top of him, and even if the person is moving me around, I just want to ride the position here for a little bit. Take your time. The hand will then come in front of the neck, make a frame, and instead of pulling your head up, which could be very strenuous on your back. You want to make a frame and you want to lean the weight forward so that the more he pulls down, it's actually working against him because of the frame of the arm. So when the person pulls me forward, I put my weight on his neck, forcing him to let go of my neck. So when the person grabs my neck, I want to block that knee take my time to establish a comfortable base because a person could be shaking all over the place. Ride the movement comfortably here. Embrace him, take a step, sit back, roll with him, and now establish your base. Be sure that you don't put too much weight forward so he can't tip you over. Spread your hands and sit back. Find yourself relaxed in this position here. In a fight if you want, it's time to hit him on the face. Bring your hand here, 
This hand can go on the outside or on the inside, whichever feels more comfortable. If his arm is too close, you bring it on the outside. If the arm is spread out, you can bring your hand on the inside. Don't lean too much weight forward. Lean the weight on his neck, down. If, when I'm doing this movement, the person wants to throw me forward, it's okay to reopen your base again, to reestablish your base and then go back. If he tries to push me backwards, same thing. The purpose of my hands and my body being relaxed on top of me is just to ride this position. The hand goes eventually here, grab the neck, and then put the weight until he lets go. Another possibility for a headlock is if the person grabs your neck like this, and instead of giving me a chance to step in front, he spreads this base. So now I can't walk in front of him to put that step. I now want to hold his arm again or his waist, put my hand under his leg, take a step forward with this and bring him down. From this position here, again, I'm going to brace myself, bring the hand in front of his neck, and then lean the weight forward. So he now he spreads his base. Got a hold of him. Hand under the knee, step forward, brace myself here, bring the hand on his neck, and then grind, yeah. Hold the waist, bring the hand on the back of the knee, step forward, and sit back. From here, brace myself in case he wants to move me around. My hand will come in front of the neck, bring this hand either this way or this way, keeping my head up. I lean the weight. Don't hold on, please. Don't pull your head up. It's a very common mistake that you have here at this position. You try to yank your head up. That's not the idea. As I said, it can be very strenuous on your back. Hold your wrist, make a frame, and lean the weight. If you want to grind the neck a little bit, works good too. I'm going to put the other side. First one's doing this. And when he opens the leg so that I can't step in front of him, I want to hold his arm, hand on the back of the neck, step forward, and bring him back. Establishing my position here. Bring the hand in front of the neck and then lean the weight on his neck. If the person grabs your neck in a headlock and jams you into a wall, you want to establish a base, you can't pull him away. He's leaning his body weight against the wall. He's bracing himself against the wall. So what you want to do here is that with both hands, grab the outside leg, walk around and then drive him down. Establish your base on top, because if you want to move you up, you want to take your time here. Be sure to use your chest on top of him to hold him in this position, so that your hand can now go on top of his neck, hold the wrist, and then lean in. Same movement here from another angle. No, right, this way here. the wall. I can't pull him away, I can't sit back. He's using the leverage of the bracing of the wall. From here, I want to hold the leg, lift the leg up, and make it fit on the back leg. Establish my base in here, bring this hand over the neck, and then grind his neck. One more time. Take your time, hold the leg, walk around, What I'm doing here is that once I find myself in this position, I want to lift the leg up, I want to walk around and drive him back with my neck, my upper body. So it's one, two, and my upper body drives him down. Please, wait. 
in essence what I'm doing, he's got my neck. I want to lift his leg up and then guide him back. That's what I move, that's my move. So he's got my neck here. I make him pivot in one leg. This is the trick. Lift the leg up, using your body, walk around, and I keep his leg off the ground so that my head can drive him back. Establishing my base. Hand goes around the neck, hold the wrist, and lean in. If the person grabs my neck and pushes me on the wall with him on the outside, I'm stuck because now he's using his weight. I can't push him that way. So what I want to do here is hook this leg. One. Use the hook on the leg and walk my way around holding the hand. Getting out of this. Breaking out. So if he grabs my neck and jams me into the wall, I want to control the arm, hook the leg, and by using the hook in here, walk around. I'm going to use my hands against the wall for balance so that I can then clear my neck, hold his head down incomplete with a knee strike to the head or to the body. Let's see there. Reach out against the wall. Yeah. Control the arm, hook the leg, and I kind of hop around and make sure that I use my hands for balance. The more weight I put on him, the better. Step back and knee mm here. -hmm. The wall, control the body, hook the leg, and I hop around the my oh, That's the idea, keeping it here. One more time. Hook the leg, establish the base, and my chest kind of oh, forces the arm out. Hand on my chest, hand on behind his head. One last time. I say, hey man, leave me alone. Let's go try. Hook the leg. Use your hand. Good. If the headlock happens, from behind, you want to drop in base, making sure that your body is not straight up, because if I'm straight up looking this way, he can pull me back. I want to look down. It's very important that you're able to see your toes at this point, which will keep your body in a certain angle forward. From this position here, as he pulls me back, I'm heavy. I have enough leverage to prevent him from pulling me back. From this position, I want to bring my head straight down between my legs. And he'll fall over like that. Push the bend the knee, right? One. So from this position. What you want to do at this point is when you drop in base, that's what you want. Again, don't let this happen because it can pull you off balance. Be sure you are looking down at your toes. That's going to increase your leverage, give you better stability, and prevent the person from pulling you back. Once again, hoist, please. From here, my head goes straight down. Never let go of his arm when he flies over because if you let his arm is actually supporting me from moving my body, it gives me a good support so I can keep a solid base at this point. If you throw the opponent and let go of the arms, you probably fall back. 
So that is not what you want. It's one. When you flip, keep that hand glued to you here. So you throw him over and use that same arm for support so that you can stabilize your base. One, it's not too hard. One, keep the hand here, throw him over, and use this arm for support. The other side. So one. Yeah. Hold it always to the arm so he, you don't lose your balance. One, keep yourself in base and the head goes straight down between your legs. Right. As you bend forward, be sure that you don't push him back with your behind. That's not what you want to do. Only your upper body should bend forward. Your base remains the same. You bend at the waist. That's what you're looking for. So it's one. Bend at the waist. That's the move. One. Head down. Although my movement is a very simple uh, that's all the action you have to do. The attacker goes almost 360 degrees. He goes from all the way from this side and he flies all the way around. So it's an extremely violent consequence for the person who's grabbing your neck from behind. One, two. Okay, one more time, please. If the person grabs the neck and this time bends me back, I no longer have the leverage to throw him forward. I still want to put my hands here to protect my neck from being squeezed. I want to rest my weight on his arm, step behind his leg, and then spin around into base right here. From this position now, he is off balance. I had control on his arm, I have myself a good base, and as I bring my head down towards my knee, he ends up on the ground. Again, you can compete with a strike, an elbow hip, or even an arm lock. So he grabs my neck. Number one is to make sure that he can't strangle my neck by giving me the, the protection of the hands around his arm. From here, I want to rest my weight on his arm, step behind the leg, and then spin around. Be sure to adjust your base or whatever you need so that you don't feet, leave your feet glued to the ground. Protecting yourself by leaning forward prevents him from pulling you back. So be sure that your body this time is again angled forward here. I have his arm. The leg is trapped. I gotta do now is bring my head down. Complete in this way. Grabs it now. One, two, readjust your base, turning your feet to whatever you need to be comfortable. Head down, bring him down. The other side twice. One. Step behind the leg. Observe that this foot, I will turn to readjust the foot as much as I need on this side. I now put my head down and bring him in with me. So it's, it's sometimes as you do this move here, step behind his leg and walk around. Don't let this foot get stuck because you'll feel very awkward if you don't turn the foot around so that you put yourself in a more comfortable stand. So be sure that when you get to this position, please hoist, grab the neck. I want to rest the weight on his arm, step behind the leg, and I will be turning this foot as much as I need to, to readjust my base. From here, I'll put my head down and flip him over. So let me do it one more time from this side. If the person pulls you back, you rest the weight, step behind his leg, walk around. Be sure to keep your body close to him. If you get away to throw him and he steps out with that leg, you must catch that leg again so that you can now complete the throw this way. So it's up to you to make sure that the leg is trapped because that's what's going to ensure the, trip, the, the fall. One more time, please. 
Grabs the neck. Don't try to break away from the person. You don't want to move away from him. You don't want to move away from, try to get away. That's not the idea. The idea is to hold your weight and keep your body like a hinge in a door. I'm going to stay here. I want to keep this very close to him so that I can walk my way around. If you take the leg out, once again, I'll catch that leg as many times as I need to. Oh, I'm going to catch the leg and then bring him down. If the attacker reaches for something, your first move is to block your hand. You want to take a step forward and slide your hand to his wrist. Hold his wrist and then get the gun out. Your number one concern is stop the hand from moving. That's what I want to do. I want to glue his arm to his body. From here, I'm going to step in and let my hand slide over the wrist so I can end up with a good comfortable grip around his wrist. The back arm must be high because if I put my hand low, he might be able to pull the hand away and carry the gun with it. So you want to make sure that when you go around, your arm is high enough that it blocks the elbow from moving back from this position. From here, I want to fold this hand over and get the gun. If when I pull the hand, he lets go of the gun, I will for the weapon immediately. I want it, my, main, my main thing is to get a hold of that weapon. Once again, push on the more. If he brings the arm here, the weapon here, I want to bend the hand, fold, and get the gun out. So if you reach for one, pull this out, fold the wrist, and as I bring the gun towards him this way, it bends his wrist and makes it impossible for him to grab the weapon. I will peel the gun that away, and then end up with the weapon in my hand. Always ready to squeeze this. I'm bending his wrist against my arm back here, so that's my move. I'm pulling it back this way. So I have the, suspect, the person with one hand and the gun on the other hand. So, one, two, three. If I hold the hand this way and try to pull the gun that way, the natural grip of his fingers make it much more difficult for me to get the gun away from his hand. So from this position, I want to point the gun back at him. So if he pulls the trigger, he'll be shooting at himself. I have the gun pointed at him. That automatically forces to bend his wrist. Then I want to peel the gun inwards. One, two, bend the wrist, point the gun at him. Even if he's very strong by holding the barrel, I can force him to bend the gun inwards this way. From here, I will overlap the hand, squeeze the wrist, and bend the gun that way, so that I can end up with the weapon in my hand. One more time, please. One more thing that you want to make sure you do it as you're doing this, is to keep your head down, so that when you pull this out, if the person is trying to hit you with that back hand, I'm going to be protecting myself here. If you stay here, you're vulnerable to get hit with a headbutt or even a clear punch with that hand. So tuck your head in. One, two. Get the hand out, fold the wrist, and pull the gun out. One side on the other side. Two. Be sure that this arm is over the elbow. Pull the hand out. Fold it and peel the gun that way, so that you can end up with a weapon in your hand. One, two, this, fold this out, and ready to go. 
Now if the attacker has a gun behind his back. What you want to do at this point is when as soon as he reaches for the weapon, I want to take a step and put my hands this way with my base so he can't pull me that way from here. And then I'm going to drive my arm in, wrapping his arm and lifting the elbow up. Get the gun out of his hand. Okay, once again. So once again. One. And now I'm gonna get the gun out. At this point, you wanna make sure that when you step forward, I'm again in base. So if his hand is back there, I wanna have enough leverage on my base to prevent him from pulling me over. So that's the move I'm looking for. From here, my hands will overlap and wrap him over forward. Base, if he moves around. I'm going to end up with this. Squeeze the arm until he lets go of the weapon. One more time. So as he reaches back, my hands go in here. I'm going to wrap the arm around, squeeze the arm, and get this gun out. And I still have control over his arm at this position. The other side. One. Two, three. So I have the arm and the weapon. Now, if the attacker has a gun pointing at you, what you want to do here is pivot on the leg so that you can deflect the hand. The second hand immediately comes in and grab thumbs up over the weapon so that you can now step behind him, wrap the arm again from underneath, keep your head down, point the gun at him, which makes him bend his wrist. Holding his arm in place with my arm from behind, I will overlap the hand, peel the gun inwards, and end up with the gun in my hand. The trick of the movement is that you turn on the ball of the foot. You don't want to just hit this hand because he could pull the trigger and nick you here with the bullet. So what you want to do at this point is to pivot on the ball of the foot to make sure that you deflect the gun. Hand go in here, step in, wrap the arm, bing, bing, hit, bing. If the person wants to grab you here, you want to hit him a couple of times, even a headbutt, and then take him down, pulling the gun away and completing this way. So the person is here. I want to turn, get a hold of this, and as I come in, if he holds the barrel, I want to use a knee hit, a headbutt, and then bring him back. Both hands, I'll pull the gun away. Let me do this on the other side. Let me make sure that we get this. When the person has got the gun in front of you like this, Again, I don't want to just hit here. What makes it safe, what increases my chances, is the fact that I'm going to turn, making sure that the bullet goes by me. This is the move. If my hands are up, that's the move. The pivoting on the leg is the key factor in this move. Never do it this way because it could turn the gun towards you. Be sure that you turn outwards, second hand comes in, Step behind, wrap the arm once again here so he can't pull the arm away, bend his wrist, and get the gun in your hand. Let me do one last time here like this. So that's the move. One, two, three. I want to use the grip on the weapon so that I can point the gun at him, which causes him to bend the wrist overlapping my hand and peeling the gun backwards. So that's what I have. If the person comes from behind with a gun on your back, this is what you want to do. 
first one to say, hey, why are you going to shoot me? So that you can have a good sense of where the weapon is and, and realize which hand is he using to hold the weapon. Say, hey, man, don't shoot. I'll step in, control the arm, step in front of him, and then the head goes down. At this position, I put my weight on his stomach, wrap the arm, and force him to let go of the weapon. So if the person comes from behind and has the gun, it's very important that as you talk to him, that gives you a sense of watching, where is he holding that gun? Which hand is he using? So hey, what do you want? You want my money? I want to step in. Stay close to him so he can't pull the gun away. Step to the side, go in front of him, and again, complete the arm lock here, and force him to drop the weapon. Now have the gun. Let me emphasize. <clears throat> In this position, you don't want to just turn because he could draw the gun and shoot you from here. There's too much space between you and the attacker. So the movement is not to just turn. The movement is to take a step to shorten that distance. I want to be so close that he can't pull the hand out. What's happening? I want to I wanna take a step and be real close to him. So this leg of mine, when I step back, I don't step away to create this space. I want to step inwards, going almost around him to wrap him up. From here, be sure that every single time you look back, every single time you must look back, talk to the suspect, so that you have an idea of exactly which side you're going. And then when you step back, wrap his arm. Walk to the side, control the position by wrapping the arm in the waist. Relax, step in front of him, bring your hip across, and then head down. Wrap the arm and break here until he drops the gun. Right, and then you have it. Let's do one time on the other side, hoist, please. You must look back every single time. So from here, that's the move. One, stay with him, step in front of him, head down, and then complete with an arm lock. Get the weapon. This time. Not only I want to turn, but I want to be close to him. My chances will increase if I can stay so close that he doesn't have the space to put the gun between him and me. That's why the, the embracing is crucial. That's what I want. Two. Step in front, bring your hip across, and again, head down. Flip it over, complete with an arm lock right here, until he drops the weapon, and then I'll have to go. Okay. Another possibility is if the attacker comes from behind, has you in this position, in a hostage-like situation. From here, again, I say, hey, man, don't do that. My hand is going to come in, grab the wrist, and then twist his wrist, peeling the gun out. I have the weapon here. So it's this move. The hand comes in, holding the barrel away, so that he can't point the gun at me anymore. That's what I want. The second hand comes on the inside, gets a hold of his wrist. At this point, I can put my thumb on the trigger guard to give, you a, give me a better grip, more torque. So from here and here, I'll take one step back, be sure you don't bring the gun in front of you. Keep that barrel away. So that when you torque the hand and the wrist on the gun, he has to let go. And now I have the weapon. So he's here. Say, hey. One, two. 
It's okay to talk to him. Say, please don't shoot me, man. Don't do that. I'll do anything you want. That's the move. Two, and adjust for this. One step back, keeping the gun away from you. Crack the hand. If he doesn't let go here, if his finger gets stuck, that's going to force him to go down. Too bad for him. Right, you know, I have the weapon at this position. So, so the guy's got my neck. So, hey, one, two. If you want to take a half a step up to the side, it's fine too. One, two. Sacó de pescoço um pouco esse. The guy here says, hey, one, two. Step back in base. Notice that as I step back, I will pivot this leg uh, to adjust my base so that I'm continuously comfortable in my stance. From here, I'll turn, feel the gun out of his hand, and have the weapon in a safe distance. One, two, three, crash that hand. Of course, I will drop the guy to the ground at this point. Bing. And bing, have him here. When practicing the gun sequences, be sure to use a fake gun. Once again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of doing the movements slowly. When practicing the techniques slowly, it's easier for you to concentrate on the details. Speed will come with practice.